Hello folks, Jason Christman here, JC's Bees. Today I want to discuss small hive beetle larvae and what a pest they can be. But before I get into that, let me explain something because a lot of you are probably going to notice this. Um, got a little bit of blood here on my nose. That's just from a recent cut. I went up to do my cattle chores while I'm cruising through the pasture on my ATV. A briar flings back, catches me on the nose and a couple places on the cheek is what it is. So just wanted to point that out real quick before it's down in the comments and uh, everybody's wondering what's going on. That is the deal. What I've got here is a super that I found just last week. I didn't realize it was still on the colony and once I seen it I knew I needed to get it off. At the time I wasn't even actually in the hive. I just looked over to it and noticed it was still on. I didn't really figure there would be much if any nectar at all in it. But to my surprise, it's a completely full super, all except for this one frame here. I'm going to set this frame off to the side. For the most part, all of these frames are full, except for this one. This one only has a little bit of nectar or honey in it. So I was very tickled to find that I had a little bit of fall crop to extract. So I threw on my Saracel Bee Escape which looks a little something like this. Put the super back on, threw on my inner cover, my outer cover, and the next day I came and removed the super. Had no bees in there. That escape just works fantastically, Sarah Cell. Um, brought the super here into my little sunroom where I do my extracting. Started pulling frames and looking them over. And uh, boy, was I happy. Look at all that capped honey. Look at it, just frame after frame. These are medium frames. This is a medium super. So there's roughly, you know, 25, 30 pounds of honey here. Now, sure, there could have been a little bit more if I would have only stuck uh, nine frames in this box and spaced the frames out a little further. Then they would have made fatter combs and it could be a little heavier. But at the same time, when I was looking these frames over, I noticed something that I've never seen before. And I want to show you what that is. Let me step up here and hold it up in front of the camera so you can see. If you look across this frame, you're going to notice a bunch of little tiny pinholes. You see all those? It's not just on one side. And it's not just on one frame. It's on every single frame in this box. Well, those little holes got me thinking, what could they be? And then it hit me. That's hive beetle larva damage. So I took my pocket knife out and I opened up one of those little holes so I could see down in the cell. And guess what? I was right. Looking down in the cell with the sun up to my back, I could, uh, I could see that little larva down in there crawling around. So I opened another one. Same thing opened another one same thing oh boy problems you see if you're not aware the small hive beetle larva as it moves around eating your honey and your pollen and and all that good stuff and tunnels through the cells it leaves a K use behind I believe it's K and what that does is leave a slime that ferments your honey not a good thing um, so at this point I have a couple options four to be exact, and they go a little something like this. Number one, I can freeze this super, then extract and feed it back to the bees via hive feeders. Not a bad option. Number two, I can extract, filter, and hope the filter catches all of the larva. Then once I get all the honey in the bucket, stir it up a little bit, and taste a couple bites. See if it tastes all right. Does it taste fermented? Does it taste a little off? Number three, I can extract, filter, and make mead. Hmm, it's an interesting idea. I like alcohol. Number four, and this is by far the easiest option, the least amount of labor. Take this super, and set it a good hundred yards or so away from your hives. Maybe set it on a piece of plywood and let the bees just rob it out. Afterwards, freeze the frames to kill any leftover larva and you're done. 
Now the reason I say to put a piece of plywood under here is because when you do open feeding, the bees are going to tear all these cappings off and they're going to fall on the ground. With the plywood down there, you'll at least be able to uh, catch the wax and render some nice clean wax. So, personally, I think it's a little risky to extract taste and uh, even if it does taste good, go ahead and bottle it. I would be afraid that weeks later, it would ferment in the bottle. And now you've got all these bottles of honey that you've uh, wasted the bottle and now you've got to pour back into a bucket or just get rid of. It's no good. So I don't know that that option is necessarily for me, but if it works for you, great. Personally, in the position I am, where I make weekly videos, I'm thinking more the mead option. What that will do is give me some more content to share in the off season, which we're heading into, and uh, that'll be interesting and very tasteful. So, if you remove a super and you see these holes in your cap cells, take note to that and dig a little deeper. Make sure you don't have hive beetle larvae in those frames. These hive beetles are a pest like you would not believe. If you do not have them now, good job to you. I've been keeping bees 10 years this year. I've only seen hive beetles for the last year and a half. And now that they're here, I've got to do my best to keep them out of my colonies. And the best way to do that, sure, is to keep the colonies strong, keep the entrances reduced so that the bees are able to manage who enters, and not give the hives too many entrances during the summer months. It can be a little bit tricky at times to do all this. See, at least with Varroa, we have treatments that are deadly to the mites. But with the hive beetles, we only have preventative steps to help keep the hive beetle count low. And that's rather frustrating. We have these things called the beetle barn, the beetle blaster. Neither one are 100% effective. Um, I got both of them in hives now, and I watch the beetles just walk right across them. Um, we've got the beetle blaster uh, or beetle buster entrance board, which does seem to help keep the beetles from entering into our hives, which is a good thing. But at the same time, who can afford that for all of their colonies? It just gets too pricey. So we've got to do our part and keep the entrances reduced and the colonies strong, like I already mentioned. Um, you can do your part if you don't have hive beetles yet by keeping your bee yard clean. Don't let any frames lay out around your bee yard. Keep all of your burr comb and any pieces of wax cleaned up. Don't lay pollen patties out in the bee yard. Just different things of that sort can help keep the hive beetles away from your area. So if you do that, you'll be a lot further ahead than I am now. So I hope this video has been educational to you. You've learned a little bit about these hive beetles and their larvae and what a pain in the arse they are. Uh, is what it is. So anyway, if you like this video, throw me a big thumbs up. That'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. In which, in this case, we need to help educate other beekeepers before their honey crop is destroyed like mine was. If you haven't subscribed please do so and make sure you click on that little bell so you get notified when i release new videos thanks for watching folks and uh and make sure you come on over to my patreon page and check out some of the free posts they're pretty educational mm -hmm.